Glutathione is a critical but often misunderstood compound. Unfortunately, low glutathione levels are very common today and can lead to a lot of different health problems. In this video, I want to talk about what exactly glutathione is, what it does in the body, and how you can support healthy levels, which means we will also cover glutathione supplements later in the video. Let's start off by talking about what glutathione actually is. In short, it's one of the most important antioxidants in our body. It's often called the master antioxidant because it doesn't just fight free radicals like other antioxidants, it also recycles them and keeps the whole antioxidative system running smoothly. For example, when vitamin C or vitamin E neutralize a free radical, they become used up and inactive. Glutathione has the ability to reactivate these antioxidants, so basically bring them back to life so they can protect your cells again. Another thing that makes glutathione special is that it's produced inside your own cells. So it's not something that you have to get from food. This gives your body full control over when and where to use it. Also, glutathione doesn't just stop oxidative damage. It also plays a huge role in detoxifying heavy metals, chemicals, and waste products through the liver. On top of everything we just talked about, glutathione also helps your liver in phase 2 liver detoxification through something known as glutathione conjugation. This pathway is where the body attaches glutathione to harmful substances to make them more water soluble. Once bound to glutathione, the toxins can then be eliminated through your bile or urine, which reduces the damage that they do in your body. On top of that, it also plays a role in regulating inflammation, supporting brain health, and making sure your mitochondria work properly. To increase your glutathione production naturally, here is an overview of the best sources of the three amino acids needed for glutathione production. For cysteine, we have high protein animal foods like chicken, turkey, eggs, yogurt, and cottage cheese. Whey protein, especially cold processed whey, is one of the richest natural sources of cysteine and it is also in a highly absorbable form, which is why it's been shown to directly increase glutathione production. You can also get smaller amounts from broccoli, garlic, and onions, which are sulfur-rich plants that support cysteine production in the body. Keep in mind that cysteine is the most important and often the rate-limiting amino acid for glutathione production. So it's usually the amino acid that you need to focus on when you want to increase levels. Next, we have glycine, which is found in collagen-rich foods. So the best sources are things like bone broth, gelatin, skin from chicken or fish, and slow-cooked meats. It's also present in small amounts in plant foods like spinach, kale, cauliflower, and pumpkin seeds. A good way to boost your glycine intake is to not just eat muscle meats, but also the skin and connective tissue, for example, when you eat chicken wings. Lastly, we have glutamine. Technically, for glutathione production, the body doesn't need glutamine, but instead glutamic acid, which can be made from glutamine. Good food sources include meat, poultry, eggs, dairy products, soy, and tomatoes. Foods like Parmesan cheese, mushrooms, and seaweed also naturally have high glutamic acid levels. Even though it sometimes gets a bad reputation because of MSG, natural dietary sources from whole foods are different and they're necessary for making glutathione. Great. With all of that said, let's get to glutathione supplements. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Normal glutathione supplements don't work very well. Regular non-special glutathione pills or powders tend to break down in the stomach before they can get absorbed. Your digestive system basically tears glutathione apart into its basic amino acids and very little of it makes it into your bloodstream. That's why for many years, many researchers thought that glutathione supplements were completely useless. Fortunately, this isn't entirely true because we now know that even though it gets broken down in your digestive system, your body can still use the raw materials to build it up again. So even regular glutathione supplements will slightly boost your levels. That said, the problem of getting glutathione into your body without it being broken down beforehand is still there. This is why online you will often find supplements like whey or N-acetylcysteine listed as glutathione boosters. That's because they supply cysteine and then help your body make its own. Also minerals like selenium and zinc are critical here, because they help activate glutathione producing enzymes. Now I should say that there's been a big improvement in recent years that does make direct glutathione supplementation more promising. And it's liposomal glutathione. 
Liposomal technology wraps glutathione molecules inside tiny fat bubbles that are called liposomes. These liposomes protect the glutathione from being destroyed in the stomach and then help it get absorbed through your gut wall. Liposomal glutathione is definitely more effective than regular forms and would be the best option if you want to take it directly, but it's also very expensive. Of course, normal and liposomal glutathione forms will also have side effects. Some people can experience mild detox reactions when they first start taking it, like headaches, nausea, fatigue, or digestive upset. This usually happens because raising glutathione levels speeds up the detox process, and if your liver and kidneys aren't keeping up, then these toxins can build up temporarily. Some people can also feel a little wired or anxious when they start taking it, usually because of changes in neurotransmitter balance. If you get strong symptoms, it helps to lower the dose, take a break, or support phase 3 detoxification to get all the stirred up toxins out as soon as possible. When and how to best take glutathione depends a lot on the form that you're using. If you're taking liposomal glutathione, it's usually best taken on an empty stomach to maximize absorption, so typically around 30 minutes before a meal. Doses will be different depending on your goals, and for general antioxidant support, a typical dose will be around 250 to 500 mg per day. For active detox protocols or chronic health issues, Many people go higher, up to 1000 mg or more per day, usually divided into two doses, so morning and then again early afternoon. If you're using a reduced glutathione capsule, so the cheaper non-liposomal kind, you can try taking it with vitamin C, which will help protect it a little bit during digestion. These supplements will also usually come in doses between 250 and 500 mg, again sometimes more. To wrap up this video, Glutathione is one of the most powerful protectors our body has, but supplementing it correctly takes a little know-how. Boosting your own production with the raw materials is often the best first step that you can take. If you need extra support, then high-quality liposomal glutathione will be your best bet. As always, start slow, listen to your body, and support your detox organs so you can make the most out of what glutathione has to offer.